man we suspect of being a terrorist is about to walk a package whose contents are unknown to us into a football stadium packed with 80,000 American souls. I play a character called Rule Abbott in Condor, and I'm the deputy director of the CIA, and I'm a complicated character, which is cool because I would rather be complicated. I'm, I guess, adjectives I would give myself, although I'm not sure I really would. I would say I'm tough. I'm, I've got high principles. Other people would disagree with that in the show. Uh, I operate on my deepest instincts. I'm quite religious. And one side of me is sort of horrible in the sense of I could kill you. When I read the, I think I only read one episode, maybe two, I went, oh, I've never done this in, a, in anything like this exactly. It's wonderful writing, and it, I was really drawn to the writing. And then the fact I would get to work with Bill Hurd again, who was, I was in, he was in my like third movie that I was in, he was the star of that movie, and we played best friends, and we became really good friends. And then I never, like in movies, he, he worked in China and Hawaii, and I was working in other cities, and I almost never saw him until I walked back on the set. And it was, it's just fun to be with people that you like. And Brendan Fraser, I've vaguely known over the years, and he is, you know, deeply wonderful and also lovely, and, uh, and Mira and, and everybody. Simone Naked Cell Block J Hobby Room. I want to buy it. It's not for sale. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes. In short, the picture was a sensation. Oh, the French Dispatch. Again, Wes Anderson, one of my most favorite people, directors. He was in the beautiful city of Angoulême, which none of us had ever heard of. It's the comic book capital of the world. And you, you wouldn't notice it. It's a medieval city. And windy, twisty, we found a Michelin star restaurant. It was just a dream to be there. And it is so much fun to reunite with your friends from the Old West movies. Uh, it just gets more and more fun. It's a comfort level, and he works in a very specific style and way which anybody could adapt to but but I think when I think it's more I think it's just easier for him not to meet new people and yet every movie there is somebody new in an important part that you didn't meet before in his movies but it's wonderful kind of like Chris Guest movies you get a level you get the actor get a level of comfort the director gets a level of knowing he can talk to you this way or she can talk to you this way I'm crazy about you that's really sweet I'll take that over some guy, you know, defecating on my head. <laughs> Just like Wes has his own particular set, uh, Chris's is magically different. I'll give you a few ideas. One is, you're never told anything. You get a you get a an outline of what's happening that in the in the in the movie, and it might say this is the scene where blah blah talks about going into the play, but it doesn't say he talks about this, then he talks about this, then he goes there. Once in a while it does. There's no rehearsal. You don't discuss it much. If you're a pair of characters, like if you're Fred Willard and Catherine O'Hara in Waiting for Guffman, he sends you home and says, your character is going to have to come back and perform and do an audition. That's it. They got to choose what they were doing. They got to, we never saw it before. We sat down. There's no rehearsal. Chris will say, the frame starts on the left over here where the door is. The frame is over there. Go where you want. Shoot. Go. The freedom, the excitement, the energy, it's not like anything you ever did. And Chris's absolute desire to have you do whatever it is that's truthful. You don't have to be funny. If you're funny, that's fine. There's no pushing anything. And it's a, it's a, it's a delightful experience, and we all have become pretty good friends. What's real? Endless Seabigs whining about her childhood. What, you think that's good television? Well, you're the experts. Good luck with that! John Goodman, to me, is up there in the pantheon. His ability to be present, to be different characters, to sit there looking like nothing's on his mind and he's just sort of humming and then suddenly they go action and this light of beacon of truth goes on and he just, it's just a joy to be with him. He focuses on more, than, as much as any actor I've ever watched focusing with brilliant results. When you get a call, hey, do you want to direct this? What makes you want to do it? I like to work. There are TV shows. I mean, I don't get asked that much because I'm not particularly known as a director. Um, I'm attracted to talent, to cast, to obviously the script, the subject matter, and who the people are. I've been asked by some pretty amazing people once in a while to do a job where they say, we can't show you the script and we don't even know what you're doing. Would you like to be in it? And the answer is yes, of course. <laughs> Everyone stay 
calm. Everyone, please stay calm. In those anthology things, it's a kind of a new world. You could even do, you can do anything, basically. And I really did, I don't remember my episodes too well, but there was one episode that I happened to see recently, and I went, doing things fast, cheap, and on the fly sometimes makes you follow better instincts and do and make things in a kind of one of them came out rather i was you know i'm not a huge fan of what i do i'm just glad i did it and tried my best but there was one of them when i thought oh that was pretty good i made some good choices i had fun i burn the formula and i put your diapers on backwards i mean i made up a a song to sing you to sleep but that made you cry even more <laughs> you make up songs i love lisa kudrow i've worked with her many times after that and always loved her before i think she's pretty much a genius but i say that too many times to, i suppose i shouldn't say that but she is um i loved the cast i didn't like my wig and then i it was fine <laughs> you know um it's nice when you don't have hair to have any hair at all in a show um and it was amazing I think I was in the fourth year, maybe, I can't remember. It was well-oiled, because I, when I was on Seinfeld, I was in the first season of Seinfeld towards the end, and then I came back for a couple episodes. And by the time I was on Friends, it was a huge deal. But I hadn't watched the show very much. And then they said, and now he's seeing Smelly Cat. I said, um, excuse me, <laughs> what, what does that mean? What, what's this? I had to memorize Smelly Cat, which I think all of America knew, all 20 verses in the melody. But I had to learn it and sing it to wonderful Lisa. But they were a great bunch of people, and we, we don't think about it that way, but these are ensembles. They don't necessarily have to adore each other, but they have to work to it with each other quickly and with shorthand so they can get through the long hours and the sometimes no rehearsal or whatever with new scenes. And I thought Friends was a particularly wonderful ensemble. <laughs> get a good look, Costanza? <laughs> The first three camera show I was on was Maud. I did a Maud episode, and then I wrote the stories for two Maud episodes and started trying to bifurcate my career a little bit and diversifying. And on Maud, it was like a play. I don't know that we, we did two tapings, one afternoon, one evening. I don't think we stopped and did anything. There were pickups maybe at the end for a close-up or something. On Seinfeld, we didn't stop and start as much. That's what I noticed. And in Friends, they were much more careful with line readings and let's reblock this a little bit. It all comes out to be the same, and the audience gets the impression it's all completely spontaneous. But I was amazed at the... Uh, I'm always amazed at the technical skills of when I see other actors that are impressive. I'd really like for them both to pull the plug together. If I'm brain dead, but my body is still alive, let me be. I'll come back around. I love being Alana's dad, and I love having Susie Essman be my wife. The two women who, as we all know, started on YouTube and graduated full-blown into this wonderful world that they created by not changing, not upgrading, not getting better haircuts, not using the same grubby sets and horrible clothing. And it, it's, I'm only on the show, I think, once a year. I, Susie and I are on it. She may have been on it more. Um, to work with them is really great. They're seriously good actors, as all really funny people tend to have to be. A lot of serious actors can't be funny, but if you're a funny actor, you're probably pretty good at being serious. Alana, I think, I think it's Alana who has just finished doing a, a feature, actually, uh, and I can't wait to see it because I think, I think their futures are pretty unlimited together and/or separate, and I'm dying to work with them again. And I have a lot of things I like. I mean, if you ask me when did you have a horrible experience, I probably wouldn't tell you, and I don't really have many of them, but I've had an awful lot of nice ones.